five tons each, 391 of them. You can see the channels that holds the cables, 118 kilometers of cables. And while we're looking at the roof, look at that flag. Canadians, be proud. That is the Olympic flag hanging there. We are, still are, Canada's Olympic building. Not like other countries that are like, yeah, we used, we had the Olympics there way back. 2024, if we have the Olympics and the team goes to represent, they're gonna start here, right in this building. World Juniors that just won gold in Edmonton, yeah. if you follow that, yeah. they started here. And if you're really into hockey, you will know the under 18 girls. Jada Ginla, number 10, was on that team in Minnesota, won gold. The under 17 boys won gold just three weeks ago. Beijing Olympics, just not that long ago, the ladies team went undefeated, won gold. They all start here. So you're in a very special arena. 20,000 seats all around us. Up until 1995, we, we added those lower bowl suites that you see there. There's 72 suites in this building. 46 on the lower bowl here. Those were added in 95. So you could see we had seats that went all the way down. So we lost 3,000 seats going around. So now we are a solid 20,000. We are still one of the top four largest arena in the world. Like in the world on planet Earth, we are top four in size. Why did they make this amazing salad dome shaped roof? Look around you. We've got some bare LED lights on, just enough for the guys to see. Look at this view. Look at this view. Every single seat has a good. I met some visitors last Wednesday on my tour. They were from New York. Madison Square Garden. Anybody here been to Madison Square Garden? Madison Square Garden spent the last three years doing a renovations of that arena. You want to guess what they spent renovating that already existing amazing arena? They spent $1.1 billion renovating that arena. The gentleman visiting from New York told me, we have better view sight lines and we are bigger than Madison Square Garden because we have no pillars no nothing supporting this yeah, roof nothing. except cables yeah. built to showcase Canada to the world. Yeah. Not built for our hockey team, but built to introduce us to France, Germany, all those older countries so they can come visit. Behind me here is the all-inclusive special ticket needed iconic platinum club in the red. So that area there has its own bathroom, its own elevator, its own <laughs> The other thing I want to show you guys is behind the scenes arena. So this is behind the scenes meaning the ice is made. We've got the boards covering the ice. Oh, the ice once the ice there? is made, we it takes a week to make the ice. It's done layer by layer. It's not a garden hose that comes out and That's floods true. it. It's like done our layer. Backyard brings exactly. Terrible. It's layer by layer. The Zamboni comes out and it adds a mist of hot water. And the guys do that layer by layer to get it to approximately an inch. If you were here on, on just our last tour, they had all these boards stacked. And here's our dilemma being a busy arena. You could see the hockey boards are laid over there in the yeah. corner. They have to take them out from here. They had them in because the hitmen are doing training camp. You can see the corners are opened up because there'll be 2,000 seats on here. Then they're gonna build this amazing CCMA stage there. So when they're done, here's our dilemma. This is all great, it looks good, we're summertime. We're not doing 30, 26 events in 30 days. This stage, as soon as they're done, they're gonna take that stage out starting at 11 o'clock because we have to be ready for practice NHL by nine in the morning. Wow. Can't go, can't be late. You can't go to the visiting hockey team and say, you know what guys, Stan and Joe slept in. We're running an hour behind. You're not gonna be able to practice, you know, Montreal, Toronto, sorry, you're not gonna be able to practice today. Uh, that does, that's not an option. No. Our changeover events crew would be like you at your job and your boss comes to you and says, hey, I'm sorry to do this to you. Today's Thursday, Friday, nine o'clock. I gotta have this in 
to, if whether you're finance or whatever, I gotta have this in to this company. Crunch time, can't be late. Nine o'clock, I gotta have this in. You may experience that a couple times in a year, maybe once in a couple of years. That's every day for the Saddle Dome events changeover crew. 11 o'clock, they start tearing down the stage. Two o'clock, the stage is out of here. So from two to nine, they gotta put those boards back, put the glass in, put the net in, take the boards out, resurface the, uh, do a nice scrape onto the ice, put those boards in. All this opening is filled with seats. There are seats missing here. This is all 100% filled in with seats, except for the two openings there, which is for the, the visiting and away teams. One side with the white around the window is where Beasley sits, does all his announcing. So if you have attended a game and his amazing voice, he's been our announcer for 25 years. Welcome home, your Calgary Flames! I'm game announcer, he sits up there. And those guys also control everything you see on the energy board that you experience, the music, the, the cut, the play, things like that. Visiting and home teams are the only teams that use that side up there. No media at all on that side. The only media there would be the our media, Kelly Rudy, Rick Ball, that does the announcing. Mangiapane tips it over to Dube with a shot, scores! Kelly Dube goes top corner on the power play. And the visiting team's media. On this side that's all lit up here is the newspaper, radio, podcast, whatever media, they're all up on that side. So for my visitors from um, down east, Eastern media would be there. So when Crosby's here, Nate McKinnon's here, Eastern Canada media wants to report on those guys because they are amazing Eastern hockey players. So this is our South Mezzanine. We have one just like this, and this is a casual dining area. As you can see, this is a great area, no reservations, no nothing, first come, first serve. Families like yourselves who come up here with a hot dog pizza. And look at this, once again, look at this. My voice echoes 20,000 seat arena, nobody in here. And today is extra special because it's a long weekend. Our hardworking crews are enjoying the last four days, three days if they don't work McMahon. And there's, if you were here on Wednesday or Thursday, it was busy. Everybody's trying to get something done. Somebody asked about figure skating was you. You're gonna get excited when you see these pictures because here's Liz Manley, did the skateboard of her life. First time we won a silver medal. These are the actual medals, not replicas, actual medals we handed out in the 88 Winter Olympics. As you come down here, you know what's cool about these pictures? Unlike our phones today, we could take a million phone like pictures. My wife's constantly getting the capacity full on her phone. She takes a million pictures. This is back in the day to get this picture, you would need a special camera and then you gotta get it developed. Yeah. And you gotta you get you gotta wait. I remember when I was a kid, we'd go on holidays, my dad would take the, there was a 110, the little cartridge things, and then the 35 mil, dad would be like, yeah, I took the pictures and I can't wait to get them. And then you had to pay extra to get 24 hours, like I'm thinking, what the, holy cow. Um, so, the white hat started with Team Canada in Calgary, my two local Calgarians, that white hat that's synonymous with tourism, anything special, started with the team in 1988. Quite, quite special. I mean, that is uh, an amazing Team Canada team. Look at the fashion wear back then, hey? Isn't that something? Come over here, my figure skating friend. Look at this. Katarina Witt debuted, one of the best female figure skater individual in the history of figure skating. There she is there, Liz Manny getting silver. This is 1988 social media. This, this humble torch, which resembles the Calgary Tower, for my visitors from France, this is our Calgary Tower here with a handle. This torch did what really no Canadian could do before social media. This torch introduced us Canadians, our culture, to the world. Think about it, 1988, there were people in Germany and France and they never knew anything about Canada. They thought we lived in, tea, in igloos. Congratulations Canada on preserving your igloo. And, and for my visitors here, be proud. I challenge you, my Canadians, name me a country 
right now that could assemble 10,000 volunteers, not an exaggerated number, 10,000 volunteers, free labor, driving buses, cleaning, giving information to make the 1988 Winter Olympics in Canada a very special Olympics. One of the, one of the most financially successful Olympics because every single one of our Olympic facilities still used to this day. This building is Team Canada's building. Uh, COP, aka Winsport. If you're visiting, you gotta check that place out. It's still an Olympic bobsled luge training facility. There's an arena there with three rinks in it called Markin McPhail Arena. Uh, Alan Markin is one of the uh, owners of the Flames. They built that arena, gave it back to the community. Flames practice there, our Wranglers team will practice there, Team Canada practices there. Uh, the junior boys that just won gold, the young ladies and all that. That's the head office area for Team Canada. It's now called the Ultra Club, used to be called King Club for you guys. You're seeing this first time. They just did all that deckling last week. 375 people sit up there. It opens with the doors. So for my visitors, you could come in, sit down, grab a bike, they'll reserve your chair for you after the game. It opens for another hour. And then this other amazing place here, look at the local. We have a local craft brewery, Bandit Peak. Local Calgary Brewing, amazing food, and some amazing beer you can buy here. So in Calgary, you're not stuck with the generic mainstream beer. You can enjoy some local craft beer. This is the sneak peek of what the business part of the saddle dome looks like. I know upstairs is all concrete, not so nice. Here you got like fancy carpets and <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's at the business class. memories that are priceless, memories you can't buy, and memories you will take with you for the rest of your life, because stop and think for a minute. This is a 40 year old arena. This is the dressing room for the visiting NHL team for the last 40 years. Stop and think who's been in here. Berta Gila Fleur, Larry Robinson, uh, this guy called Wayne Gretzky, you might have heard of him a few times. Um, started their career here, finished their career here. This, this room has seen the start and the end of NHL careers of players. This room will see the end of Sidney Crosby, love him or hate him. He's one of the winning guys, like um, Jonathan Taves, one of my favorite. Carey Price. Yeah. Carey Price was in this room, don't, don't quote me on the year, I think it was the World Juniors of 2011 is when the world discovered Carey Price. They're in Europe, there was that amazing shootout, they go within the United States. It's Jonathan Caves and, uh, and um, Kane for the Americans doing the shootout. Thank goodness Jonathan Caves had the better moves, he had the face mask because he was under 18. And his shootout helped us advance and we won a gold medal. Carey Price was in this room before he even saw the Bell Center. If he saw the Bell Center, he saw it as a fan, he didn't see the seating area. This is also the room used a lot of times by the main acts in this building. And you know what's cool, this is fresh in my brain, because last night as I was decompressing from an Asadolo day, there's an amazing uh, documentary about the Backstreet Boys. So Backstreet Boys became big in Europe and in Canada they got really big in 1999 when they released their Millennium album. Prior to 1999, they would have been in this room probably, they, they really came to fruition in 95. They would have been here probably 97, 98, but they would have been here for their 99 Millennial tour because they toured nine years in a row. They came back 2013, 2014 for their reunion tour. They would have been in here. What I'm saying is this, this room has seen the birth Backstreet Boys, and this room has seen, I don't want to say the end, but they're basically finished. This room has seen the start of artists and the end of artists. This is the main room, as you can see, it's decorated differently for the opening bands. Justin Bieber's been in here, Cher, Rihanna, um, Mariah Carey, um, Van Halen, Nirvana, I mean, that's a 40 year old arena. Stop and think where you are for a minute. There's no other room in this building, not the Flames dressing room, 
that's more important than this room and you will not be in any other arena from Vancouver and I don't care how fancy or how big deal Toronto thinks they are <laughs> and I don't care how fancy the new arenas are in Detroit or wherever they don't have this history. These no. walls could talk. Let me tell you. This is also Team Canada's dressing room number two. 2010 team that won gold and united us like nobody in the history of Canada ever will. Started right here. They do that step. Center ice, right here. Up drop, right here. Stop and look around where you are, folks. You're the only people. You're the only people right now in this sitting bowl. 20,000 people. You're the only ones. Penalty boxes are over there. We just got to put the glass in. They don't, and all the electronics are in there. They just got to add in all the connections to the replay room and all that. And. You can see you're standing in front of the stage area. So let's say you're not a hockey fan. Think about this for a minute. This is the main stage area. Stage is always built there. You're looking at the stage in an arena, 40 years old. Young Backstreet Boys would have experienced the Saddle Dome there. Young NSYNC, Young Cher, Young Madonna, Young Michael Bublé. Like I can go on for hours, all the bands. This, this stage area here in this arena has seen the start and the end of great artists. The stories in this building are amazing. Pure story, like it's just phenomenal to think. I saw Van Halen for the last time here. I worked that concert, one of my favorite bands. They played here and then they canceled the rest of their tour. Shawn Mendes played here, played Edmonton and canceled the rest of his tour just two months ago. I hope Sean plays again. He's a great young Canadian artist. Of course, behind the scenes, listen. All you hear is the fans. Just not people fans, building fans. That's all you're hearing. And when you watch this building light up home opener, Cal my Calgary visitors, stop for a minute, corral your thoughts. Look where you are. It's too easy to blow by this like, when you watch this on TV, you will have to pinch yourself yeah, sure. yes. that I, you were here. Because yeah. under here is Flames Ice. Yeah, and he's going to go, what is this? Flames <laughs> Ice. Yeah. I've been here for almost 15 years and I still don't take for granted this. Because you folks helped me appreciate this because for a lot of staff that's been here 25, 30 years, they take this for granted. They've lost that humility of who they are and where they are in the building. For me, when I meet tourists, you help refresh that in me because your excitement and appreciation I feed off. If I didn't meet you guys, it would just be another day at the office, on Flames Ice, hanging around, talking to Ben, one of our trainers, in, in a non-eventful way. But this is my last tour day, and I'm sharing my end of 2022 tour season with you guys. I have two more groups after this, and then summer is officially done in the Saddle Dome wow. when Rick's tours are done. Because I am the only tour guy here. You're a great tour guy. Well, I appreciate it, thank you. Sharing, just sharing my passion with you. Yeah, you can feel that. Yeah, I appreciate it, thank you.